Hello and welcome to the NBS show, episode number 519. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So, starting off with a map of G5 Equestria has been found. Apparently, this comes from the My Little Pony Meet the Ponies Maritime Bay book. It's a page out of Sunny's journal showing of the various locations of New Equestria. Uh, we, 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 be, we, be, we, be, we, be, we, be, had, uh, uh, I feel like that's supposed to be a D, so it's like weed, um, yeah, uh, had mapped before, but this one is a bit more extensive. Uh, get an alternate chart below with some question mark, question mark, question mark, Clipping of ponder over. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, then let's let's check it out. So, I haven't been really paying attention to uh, what you call this G uh, five that much. So I I don't really know a lot about uh, the ins and outs, but. <clears throat> Let's see. Um. Yep. Uh, this is good. This is good. I'm not covering anything. So anyway. Um. As we see here, we we got a pretty small shot of uh this versions of Equestria because it feels like this is way down to the south, where it's near the ocean. Because if you compare it to G4, uh, G4's map is a bit bigger, huge, and more extensive and expensive. And this one here is just shown a snippet of locations. Like, uh, it's not a proper representation of the map, but it's just a general outlook. But anyway, uh, we see here that, okay, we got the Crystal Bright House, which is uh, Sunny's uh, home of abode. And then we got uh, the sheriff station, grandma, Piggy's cottage, main melody saloon. So that's all in uh, Maritime Bay. And I'm guessing, yeah, uh, Maritime Bay is down to the southwest. <coughs> and then uh, we go up north a bit. We got Bridalwood. So those are where most of the unicorns hang out. And then up to the northeast, you get the heights where most of the Pegasi lives. And if you take a look, see, um, we got uh, each location uh, represented by colors, race, and so on. Uh, maritime base, mostly a earth pony colony. Uh, Bridalwood is a unicorn colony, and Zephyrwood is Pegasi. Uh, then on to the northwest, we see Opaline's Dark Castle, and the design of it is fascinating because. In my opinion, it seems like it's reminiscing to how um, Candlelot looks like because near the cliff edge, you got bridges that hang out that way and so on. But yeah, there's a lot of questions when it comes to um, G5. So anyway, uh, we got this one and yeah, uh, yeah. I I think this could be one of the maps that are still not a good representation. It is a it's another it's another view of the map, but it's really not a good representation because we see Maritime Bay, Bridal Woods, Zephyr Heights, and so on. Uh, the castle's not there because it's somewhere off, and we we got no idea the distance and so on. So yeah, th this is not really a good representation of maps. But at least uh, we got maps now, so that's fun, I guess. So yeah, um, a lot of theory crafting, a lot of questions that are asked and need to be answered. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, next topic is Hasbro replaced its franchise, uh, franchisees website portal, including My Little Pony. Okay, this is not fun. But anyway, uh, 
the My Little Pony web portal has been removed from Hasbro's website, along with those Hasbro's other franchises such as Nerf and Transformers. The My Little Pony site was created in 2003 and was moved to MyLittlePony.com, sorry, MyLittlePony.Hasbro.com in July of 2015, and it featured information, information, video, and activities, mini games, and production, sorry, product listings. Uh, Hasbro's website rework involves the consolidation of the website subdomains of all of its franchises, which I imagine the intended uh, is intended to reduce maintenance costs. Now, all of the production are shown on shop.hasbro.com and all of the videos, activities and mini games are linked to from play.has uh, linked to for, from play.hasbro.com some information such as the page about characters no longer available anywhere on Hasbro's website and can only be viewed through activities such as sorry, archives web, archive, archival website such as Internet Archive, Wayback Machine, and Archive.today. Note that the changes. <clears throat> note that this change is not an in in this uh, indicational. Mm, it's not an indication of anything specific to the My Little Pony brand, since the same change was made for the site of as Bros other franchises as well, screenshot available, uh, current web portal option below, okay. Um, yeah, this this one is a bit, how do I put this? This one is a bit inside baseball for people who are not really into web development. And uh, Overcast here did mention about um, uh, probably uh, reduced maintenance costs and whatnot. So. The idea is, uh, originally they had a few pages. So let's let's just put an example of you have page one, two, and three. So as a developer and whatnot, uh, things can go wrong, and sometimes they go wrong regularly. You make changes here; it might affect here or there, and so on. So example for uh, this one is. Let's just say I did a few changes on page one. It affects page two and three. Uh, if you don't see it, it might turn up in the long run because most changes happen. It affects the downstream. So with that happening, you have to put a lot of resources to manage and fix the website and make sure that nothing breaks. So with uh, by them removing this one and moving it to uh, certain places like shop.hasbro.com. Uh, so now all of the product listings are on a page where you can buy them straight out. And for activities like mini games, videos, and all that stuff, they are linking it to Hasbro uh, play.hasbro.com. So it it makes sense in terms of how you want to um, put everything or how you want to categorize everything. And putting it this way will streamline a lot of work so instead of having that one dedicated guy working on the pony website on the nerf website on the transformers website and so on you'll have just probably a team working on the shophasbro.com website and working on the play.hasbro.com website and so on so it streamlines everything makes everything more clean and neat and yeah information and whatnot that is a bit sad that it's not available on the official site or anything but hey you still have the wiki page you still have uh, the archives page if you want to but mostly the wiki because the wiki page is thorough with its uh, information about characters this and that so uh, people would really most people would just go there because it's more uh, complete. 
So let's move on to the next news. Next news is Renegade List My Little Pony RPG Dark Side over Equestria Adventure Series Book for Pre Order. <clears throat> Renegade Game Studios recently listed a new campaign book for their My Little Pony role playing game, Dark Side over Equestria, which can now be pre ordered according to pre uh, previews world. Uh, the release date of this book will be October 24, 2023. Okay, let's see. Um, pre-order, blah, blah, blah. For a limited time, pre-orders will be, will come with a PDF copy of the My Little Pony role-playing game Dark Side of Equestria Adventure Series books at no additional cost. Please read our full policy or not. <clears throat> uh... What is in this book? What is this in this book? The shadows... The shadows are growing over Equestria. The land of Equestria is about to face a deadly new threat from the mysterious changelings. Queen Chrysalis plots tireless, tirelessly, tireless, tire, tirelessly <laughs> against the protectors of the Equest... Uh, elements of Harmony and defeating her will need cunning, insight, and the power of friendship to prevail. In this six-part campaign, your pony characters will face all manners of danger and adventure as they protect Ponyville and Equestra from a growing shadow. You <clears throat> can your character characters rise to the challenge and stand together to face this deadly mystery. This supplementary contains everything you need to run an epic game of characters. Uh, game for characters level one through five. Mm -hmm. uh, features adventure that can be played individually or linked into one campaign. Uh, any array of new threats and monsters to challenge your characters, full detail of mysterious changelings, and how to play one as a character of your own. Oh! Changeling origin and nine new shape-changing perks, a selection of new tree in influence, a hive mind infatuated that uh, infatuated outsider and seven spells for any pony caster. This adventure is recommended for four to six characters of level one to five. Requires the core robo. All right, <coughs> all right, cool, 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 cool. So anyway, for well, you guys at home, got no idea what I just read and why I was so excited. It's just here's the thing. Uh. I'm I'm going to reference a lot of D and D because that's what I know, but this can apply for other things. I I'll try to apply them when the when when it's called for. <clears throat> so anyway, this is basically an expansion pack or a additional bonus or yeah you know just more add-ons. So uh, if you bought the core rule book, that's your adventure. That's the not really. Uh, that's your starting campaign starting game and whatnot uh, it teaches you all the basic rules uh, how to create a character how to uh, uh, play by the rules and so on blah 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 and, and whatever and usually uh, core rule books don't really have adventures uh, they have just the rules how to play the character how to build a character uh, how things work how things interact with certain things and so on blah 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 and probably they will have a just a short snippet of okay, this is how you play the game. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is a quick adventure just so that you can have a step by step gameplay of an adventure. J j you know, just something simple. Just uh, this is it. Go ahead. Um, then your game master will just basically have to um. 
wing it or improv or pre-plan something that can carry on and so on. So now, uh, Dark Skies of Equestria Adventure, uh, this is an expansion. Uh, a good example is... Da, 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 um, I'm trying to think of something. Okay, uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk uh, 20... The new Cyberpunk. Uh, that game, yes, uh, has its core game. And the upcoming expansion, I, I forgot what that's called, is an add-on to the game. DLC, as you say. Now, uh, consider Dark Skies of Equestria a DLC for the main campaign where you have adventures and uh, more content. So content for this one is, well, you get a new adventure, a new adventure story that you can play. Uh, you got one new character or one new class or race. And <clears throat> I'm just saying here, uh, Changeling Origin and nine new shifting perks. So basically, you have a lot of cool stuff here. Like you can play as a changeling. You got nine shape shifting perks. You have three uh, influence. So three new influence on top of whatever they was. Uh, the three influence are hive mind infatuated and outsiders. And then seven new spells for your uh, ponies that can be uh, that can cast spells. And this is kind of cool and awesome because. We got the Ed Coral book. Now we need an adventure. Uh, for D&D, we got a lot of them. We got uh, The Lost Mind of Fendelver. We got uh, Return to Ravenloft or something like that. I forgot. And then we got the Teros book, the Ravnica books, and many more. So uh, if this game goes well, if this game does really well, uh, we'll get more uh, books, we, sorry, uh, more content. We got more more stuff, and we can uh, get more adventures going, and we can mix and match because usually when adventure books come out, they add stuff like oh, we add more creature types, we add more perks, we get add more spells and more stuff, more 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 more, and those are the kind of things where you can mix and match your characters and so on. And like I mentioned before. Uh, if one campaign says, okay, we're going to Griffinstone, okay, we'll get Griffins, or we're going to Equestria, we'll get um, Hippogriffs slash Sea Ponies. So, yeah, we'll, there, there's going to be fun there too. And maybe we'll go to Yak Yakistan or the Crystal Empire, so we'll get Yaks, we'll get Crystal Ponies. Uh, what's the difference? I don't know. So, this is how it how, how for me this is really fun like the idea of having more uh books more adventures more content more this this, this really excites me a lot um i i just wish i had people to play with because um uh, my group only plays D D, and i don't think they'll enjoy ponies unfortunately and i do wish that um, the game, um, uh, the My Little Pony RPG, is on Roll Twenty. Um, for you guys at home, got no idea what Roll Twenty is. Uh, Roll Twenty is a website where it caters to tab uh, VTT or Virtual Tabletop uh, RPGs. So basically, instead of going to a game store or your friend's house to play D and D or whatever kind of tabletop gaming that you play, you can use websites like Roll20 or many more to play virtually from the comfort of your home slash computer and computer, whatever. So, <clears throat> everything's managed online, everything managed on the screen, so you don't really need to carry your figures and whatnot and forget that, oh no, I forgot to bring my whatever it is I need to bring. Uh, everything's all online. And uh, you can play f from afar, like I'm in Malaysia, I can play with you from wherever you are. Uh, if you're in the States, I can play with you. And if you're in the UK, I can play with you from there online. That, that, just basically playing games online. That's cool. And depending on who's 
GMing and whatnot, it will be fun. Like, oh man, I really want to play this game. <clears throat> but um, I I really need to do a lot more research on this one because I got no idea what I'm doing. Uh, everything I know is from D&D, so we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, moving on to the last news. <clears throat> My Little Pony deck building game Collision Course, a Transformers crossover expansion pre-order and image arrive. Are you ready for more deck building? Because the pony train doesn't stop at ponies, apparently. Transformers will be crossing over with our G4 heroes as announced way back when. And we now have pictures of what exactly that looks like. Uh, this includes the art from the comics when they previously crossed over when the legendary robots in disguise, with the legendary robots in disguise. Get okay, more pictures and pretty pretty below. Alright, pre-order now and for a September 2023 release. Uh, for all for a limited time order, we receive a the My Little Pony deck building game Maple Pack Five for free. Sorry, um, the My Little Pony deck building game Maple Pack Five contains seven wooden ma um, meeples featuring the character from the Collision Course expansion. Oh yeah, we read we read this one way back when yeah. Not gonna go through it. Um, my little pony deck building game maple pack five will be added to you. okay. So yeah, uh, this is the box. This is the card. If you played the game, I guess you know. But yeah, um, this adds more characters and more cards and so on. So this is cool, and yeah, uh, I I I should have guessed that. Uh, the game or the deck building art is going to be used arts from the comic. But uh, from what I can see, this uh, this page here or this uh, card here, it doesn't 100% use the page. I feel like they modify it a bit just to make it look like it's an original. But I feel like I've seen this, but I'm not sure because. The art for Rainbow Dash doesn't match the art with Wing Blade, but I could be wrong. But yeah, um, seeing the cover uh, already told me that oh, this is art by, if I'm not mistaken, Tony Fleece. So yeah, this this is okay. This is okay, and yeah. We we do still we don't see Megatron. Uh, this covers the two games that were not games. Uh, the two what you call this? Uh, this covers two of the comics into one campaign or one uh expansion. So I guess this is cool crossover expansion. So I guess we can see more crossover coming in the future, not with ponies, but uh with Renegade games involving their uh, their stuff. Um, we we what uh, if there is a Transformers uh, deck building game? Probably they'll cross over with GI Joe, and vice versa. So that's going to be cool, I guess. But yeah, I I, <laughs> I haven't played the game, so I got not much detail with this one. So sorry about that. Can't can't share much more my opinion. But you get a lot of cool stuff, and if you pre-order, you get more stuff. So, yay, that's good. So, let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is, what have I been doing for my week? So, this week, no movies, unfortunately. I've been busy with work and whatnot, so haven't had time to do a lot of fun stuff. But what I have been doing, or have done, is play a bit of magic. And let's just say that, we, a lot of things happened this week that were not fun in the world of Magic the Gathering, or at least in my world of Magic the Gathering. Uh, I ain't gonna share it here because a lot of personal stuff. So, 
uh, I'm just going to limit it to I had fun, played my deck, and I was inspired to make a new one. Um, I, I'll just share the idea here because it doesn't really matter. Uh, the idea for a deck that I want to build is called the Group Hug Deck. deck. Yes, the Group Hug Deck. Uh, the idea for the deck is, or if you guys got no idea what a group hug deck is, or just group hug in general, is a deck where the pilot of the deck helps other players to achieve their goal, which is victory. Uh, this can be in the sorry, this can be in the shape or form of helping people draw more, gain life, get more features on board via tokens or things from their hand slash deck and so on. Uh, sometimes group hug decks involve things like getting more, what you call this, getting more uh, resources out or getting more stuff. Like uh, as long, uh, it, it, the idea is to help others have an advantage for winning. And probably you're thinking, Wait, if that's the goal for the deck, what about you, the pilot? Um, what happens to you? Do, do don't you want to win? Uh, what's what's what will happen to you? I mean, uh, by doing this, sounds like you're going to lose the game. <coughs> Unfortunately, for most group hug decks, uh, yes, the pilot might lose. Most of the time, they will lose. They they won't win. Uh, the best they can do is get second place. And you know what? I want to try that. I never built a group hug deck before. I never had that feeling of, you know, let's try this. I'm try I never had that want or feeling until recently because of a song. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm going to try and build that deck and see how it goes. Because personally for me, I've played a lot of games with a lot of people. And the feeling of, oh, I want to win, I want to win, sometimes can get a bit bored. So what I want to do is now is try to let others win. Because here's, here's one of those meta game, met, met, meta in terms of the psychology of how things run. But uh, the idea for me is I want to see how people react. without. No, not really without. By, by telling them what my deck does and what they, uh, what, uh, what it does and what the goal is. And unfortunately for me, the commander that I pick, I'm playing the format of the commander, so yeah. Uh, the commander that I pick is King Kenrith, the Return King. And he is basically a peace when it comes to uh, the game because he has five abilities and all of those abilities are kind of interesting so you uh, one of his abilities is um pay red to give a creature haste and trample sorry not a uh all creatures haste and trample this is this affects the whole board, including yours and your opponents. Uh, pay uh, green to put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature. Pay white to gain life. Pay blue to have target player draw a card. And pay black for uh, to resurrect a creature from a graveyard and put it onto the controller's battlefield. So, if you take a look see at the whole situation, oh, this is kind of mean and bad because uh, the commander itself can do a lot of potentially risky stuff. But, try imagining the deck as a group hug deck where yes, I can do all that stuff, but how about I do it to your creatures? How about I help you instead? Oh, you're losing life? How about I pay this to give you life? So, I, I just want to see how the players react. I want to see how 
they react and what they do. And would I get um and and do I get the uh rewarded for my kindness? <laughs> so basically this is more of a psychology test rather than having fun. But you know, the idea of just doing it is just tickles my fancy because I want to see what happens because the it, it, it doesn't look chaotic but it is and you you can see that oh I, I'm thinking this oh um I'm helping them so I shouldn't really be doing anything bad because uh I'm by me not attacking uh by them not attacking me they're getting rewarded for stuff and if they ask, okay, cool, I'll probably give them something. And we, we'll, we, I would, I would just want to see the dynamic of, oh, this person is attacking me. Oh no, what will the other two do? So, I'm, I'm just fascinated with the idea of how things will play when you're presented with this kind of scenario where. You have a benefactor helping everybody out and wants to gain more favor. Like probably help me out with stuff, help me out combo off, help help, help me do something. Oh, I'm dying. Could you please help me? So I, I, I'm, I just want to see if helping people out uh, rewards me with not getting bashed in the face by their monsters and also uh, help them to achieve victory. So, remember what I mentioned before earlier on that I'll probably not win but I'll get second place. So, I, I just want to see if that can work. I mean, I'm not gonna say no to second place but if I can manage first place and you're probably wondering how would you get first place because you don't have your, your deck says, uh, sorry, you mentioned that your deck is more focusing on helping people out. Well, the idea is by me helping uh, my opponents out, they'll probably be focused on taking each other out, uh, taking the other three out. So leaving me to, well, uh, populate my board, get my game plan ready, which is nothing really. Um, the best I can think of is to outdraw, like make people draw their decks like crazy and decking them out, probably. But we'll see. I, I don't really have a proper win condition. I purposely didn't build that kind of deck where my goal is to win. My goal is just to have fun and see what happens. Um, in a way, it's chaotic, yes, but I didn't build the deck in that chaotic way. Uh, the chaotic comes from the people's interaction with each other. So yeah, that's that's the deck. You don't need for the item to arrive. What stuff need for it to arrive? Then I can build it. Ah. So anyway, uh, let's wrap things up. So if you guys have any questions, questions or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambassadorgmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also get us on from the live.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS Show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also Master of Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. And yeah, uh, if you're interested in helping out, do sub to the Patreon. Uh, I know it's not as grand or whatever, but if you're enjoying it and want to support, every bit helps. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the BS show. See ya.